subscribers and YouTubers, Flat and Terry here. Hey, this is part four of the series I put together for the clutch and transmission rebuild on my 37 Plymouth Coupe here. Here's the rebuild transmission from part three. Now today, it's a nice day, we're gonna put it in. But before we get started, we need to resurface this original flywheel. Okay, just got the flywheel back from the machine shop. Did a great job. Uh, as you can see, they took nine thousandths off. And again, uh, I do have the new ring gear installed. And along with that, clean this bell housing. Okay, I was able to get the power washer and uh, clean off the bell housing. Here it is. Uh, very interesting to see it clean. There's the aluminum screens over here. Those came out real nice. Uh, too, I can actually see some of the bolts now and the bracketry, how they're mounted uh, here and here. And then inside, uh, because there was so much grease and grime, I didn't realize that there were actually bolts underneath. Uh, of course, that was just caked full of, uh, you know, 80 years of grease and grime. So I still have some more cleaning to do, but the bulk is there. So this will help uh, with reassembly, putting the bell housing back in when I can take a, the uh, motor mounts off and uh, reinstall the bell housing separately. So, good news. Okay, I'm installing the bell housing and flywheel today. Uh, my current strategy is to remove the rear motor mounts from the bell housing. And then you can see up here I installed just one bolt. So at this configuration, I have to leave the uh, bell housing back just about a quarter inch or so, so I can put the flywheel in, tighten it, and then the bell housing can go back in and get tightened back to the motor. So, let's see how this works. Okay, my plan worked. I was able to get the flywheel installed. Uh, you can barely see it in there, but it's in there. Uh, just to note too that that bolt pattern in there, it can only go on one way. Of course, I found out the hard way. I had to spin it around uh, three quarters of a turn to finally get it right. But now, uh, in, to install the um, bell housing bolts and uh, and then eventually down here and get the motor mounts installed as well so uh, let me get on it okay i like it when a plan works i was able to uh, put in the motor mounts over here you can see they're already in i was able to slide them underneath i was able to put the bolts back into the bell housing and uh, now i can remove the jack and the blocks and get rid of this disastrous blobs of grease and grime and all that stuff that's been falling off uh, might be able to find an extra bolt or two that i'm looking for so uh success today okay okay glad you could join me i am finishing up the torquing of the flywheel bolts way up yonder and uh, get my trusty tool here uh, this spins the flywheel. I've had this since 1978, believe it or not. Nice little handy tool. Basically, it clips on here and here. Then we get Mr. Torque Wrench here. I got the torque wrench set to 55 pounds. And I'll connect it up here into that nut, or at least try to anyway. Here it is. So let's get this done here. There we go. 55 pounds right on the dime there. All right, flywheel is now tight. Okay, you're looking at my dial indicator that I put up against the flywheel. I want to check the flywheel for runout. Uh, I had clutch chatter, of course, which I've mentioned several times, and I want to make sure that uh, I don't have a wobbly flywheel. So I got up my tool here so carefully, if you can kind of watch, you can barely see the dial indicator there. I do have it zeroed, but as I go around, you're seeing it move. Okay, now it's moving about a thousandth in one direction back to the zero 
still at zero. I have to be very careful. Okay, it's going back slightly. No movement there. Now it's back a little bit, about half a thousand there. Okay, it's at about one right now, almost a thousand. Right at one. All right, well, I think I've gone just about one revolution now, and that has moved one thousandth. The tolerance in the manual says three thousandths. All right, so so far I'm pretty excited that this is right on. I had the uh, flywheel resurfaced, of course, I showed you earlier in this video. Yeah, we're in really good shape. Yeah, that dial indicator has only moved a little bit. So at most, I've seen it move from uh, about two thousandths. It's all I've seen it all the way around. So good news there. Now that I know my flywheel is within specification as far as runout goes, I carefully installed the pressure plate and disc. Uh, first of all, I cleaned the flywheel and the pressure plate surface as well with brake cleaner. So those are clean and fresh. Uh, what I ended up doing too, because I'm on my back, uh, doing it underneath the car uh, on jack stands, uh, I put two bolts in the top here of the pressure plate and then spun the flywheel around. So then I got enough room to push the disc back up. And then up here you can see I have the dummy pinion shaft uh, in there to help hold it in place. So, uh, good news there. So now let me put the rest of the bolts back in and uh, carefully tighten it up. Uh, I know the trick is to carefully tighten each bolt as it goes around. Uh, don't tighten the first one all the way up. That has a potential of bending some of the ears and then you're in real trouble. So, uh, let me get all those bolts in and carefully get them snugged up. Okay, one thing I didn't want to do was forget to put the gasket on, so that'll do first. And number two, pull this guy out, put my dummy out. So now I need to prepare for the transmission, so the transmission has to come in from out here. I have to lift it up, 62 pounds, lift it up, slide it in. Hopefully it'll slide right in. That's the uh, that's the plan. So let me get the transmission in place. Okay, now we're on to plan B. Plan B is to try to install it from the top. Let's see if that can happen. is one long shaft. Alright. Now get it up. Get it up there. Alright. Whew. Oh. That's some effort. Now let's see if we can keep it going. More adjustments to make.
Okay, you can see I was able to put the transmission back into its proper position. Uh, now I'm going to take out the uh, guide pins. Don't need those. They sure came in handy. Okay. There we go. Okay, now that I have the cover off the top shifter, I might as well fill it up with the gear loop while I'm at it. Uh, instead of trying to squeeze it in this little hole uh, later on. So what I'm going to do is just take this out. See if I can set that aside. Put this in here. Yep, and just tell me when, uh, when it starts to leak out. Here we go. All right, got that done. Okay, next up is the gasket in place. The shifter accordingly. And then again, what I could do is Put it back into neutral. There we go. A little bit easier. All right. All right. And let's snug them up. All right. That's it. Okay, now that I have the shifter in place, I went on to the throwout bearing arm. I wanted to show you a few things in here. Sorry if I jump around a little bit, I'm climbing way inside the car. But basically, what you have to do, there's a ball in here, way in here. If I can get in there, there's the ball that goes into the pivot arm. And that's got this bolt holding it in so what i had to do is take this bolt out take that pin out carefully slide in the throw out bearing arm pushing back the throw out bearing enough for the forks to get engaged because there's a little spring on there uh, so now magically i was able to line up that pin in here whoops that pin to this bolt and now I just have to tighten it up. So I will do that. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show too, I find fascinating with these old cars is that this is leather. It's a leather leather boot. Um, so I will find a way to uh, you know reattach it. It's got some little hooks here and that sort of thing. So uh, once I get this tightened up, I'll have to get a wrench on this side, tighten it up, and then. Uh, latch this back into place but uh, pretty cool uh, pretty interesting uh, how innovative they got with just uh, raw materials okay I was able to refasten the leather boot that covers the throw out bearing arm next what I gotta do is I have to install the arm between here and this shaft over here so this is part of the clutch pedal assembly here uh, that's that's next Okay, I'm under the flathead now. Here's the rod. I was talking about here I've connected it. So every time I move the 
clutch pedal. You can see it move there, and then there's the throttle bearing here, up yonder. Okay, so I got some lengthening to do. Uh, let me come on over here. You can see the clutch. It's nice having the floor out of there. I can reach the clutch pedal from underneath. So they say this distance here has to be about an inch. So what I got to do is lengthen that rod there to make that happen. So uh, let me do that and see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, I extended the adjustment rod uh, about that far, as you can see in the adjustment nut. So about eh, almost half an inch or so. Now let's take a look at the clutch pedal itself. It pays to have long arms. Yeah, here we go. So you can see about that distance before uh, get it over there. There we go. The throttle bearing starts to connect. All right, I'm trying to do this upside down under the car. But anyway, very good. I think we're in good shape. So I call that success. I'll put the spring on now and uh, go from there. Okay, now to put the pan, the inspection cover back on. Whoops, excuse me. I need to hide this thing in here and squeeze it in, in here. Okay, now I'm going to scoot over to that side. Okay, now the other bolts. Oh, of course they're way over there. Oh, these long arms come in handy. That did it. All right, I think I'm done. I got them all in. Okay, where are we here now? Okay, there we are. We got them all in.
Hmm. Oh yeah? Bean starter is in. Okay, so we built the transmission completely in part three. In part four here, I put it all back together. I hope it works. Let's test it. Oh yeah, that was easy. Okay, that was just a quick little spin uh, in the coupe here. Uh, the clutch still has a little chatter to it. I don't know if that's just because we have fresh surfaces uh, to break in, so I'll drive it some more. Uh, and then also the transmission shifts perfectly like it did before. However, I do have that new uh, counter shaft gear in there, the cluster gear, uh, so I can drive with more confidence uh, that I don't have any issues with that in the future. So, uh, partial success, I'll continue to drive it and uh, hopefully the clutch smooths out a little bit more and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.